So this is Baruch. I'm at the Tikkun Elevator Kolel, and the control of the mind is one of the topics that we're going to work on right now. So this is part seven, a word of caution. So the let's just read this little blurb that we have up up above. It's it's uh, I won't read it in Hebrew. I'll read it in English. There's one slight grammatical error, and we'll just keep going on. Reish Lokish said the following: The Holy Spirit tells them. So they shall increase, and so they shall burst forth. Because of that, the physical side of them becomes weakened, and once the physical is weakened to the extreme, the soul and spirit can attach with an energy of holiness. Now he's going to explain what he's actually talking about here. And before we get into it, I'd like to show you just a little vort that I've seen before, which I think is very nice. And this tries to, tries to explain uh, from a psychological point, if you were a marriage counselor, part of the problem that exists between uh, in marriages, between males and females. So we look at the, the name Yud Ke Vav Ke. Let's uh, see what we could do here. Yud. And then we'll make the yud so that it really fits right into the next k. And then coming out of that k, we're going to make a vav. And then underneath that k, we're going to make another, that vav rather, we're going to make another k. So it's really yud, k, vav, k, like that. Uh, I don't know if I should have written it like that, so we'll just close it up a little bit more and we'll make it so that it's not a real k. But this is what it could look like if we were looking under it, at it in terms of a flow. We want to flow all the energy into molecules. The issue here is really the fact that the vav is between the two k's. So in terms of the lower k, which is the clay k of molecules, right? Molecules is very physical compared to bina, which is this. This is bina. So if a man, who is the letter Vav, represents their Anpin, had a choice between dealing with Malchus, who has the children, and she has the house, and she has all the people, and the money, and the bills, and she's handling all of that. She is a normal thing for her to be involved in the more difficult parts of life. Where is the Vav going to be? So rather than get involved in the physical parts of life, the Vav would much, have much be, be much happier if it could be involved with Bina instead. Bina is completely otherworldly and wonderful. So this is a part of the dilemma that Rabbi Mimran wants to talk about over here. This is the conflict between Zer Anpin, who represents the letter Vav, and Bina, which represents the higher sphere of really what you could reach to, the open door. And Malchus, which is really the business of it. So let's see how this works and see what Rabbi Memran is going to say as we have this little idea to work with. So Rabbi Memran says like this. The control of the mind one has during the meditative experience will enhance the spiritual experiences tremendously. So he's telling us, and there have been schools for this uh, over the generations, all of the ages, going back thousands of years, to teach us how to gain control of our minds. These are associated with the states of consciousness experienced by prophets and mystics. The senses are blocked out. They can do this, and we can learn to do this. And all sensation, both internal and external, is eliminated. There's nothing there. In such states of consciousness, the feeling of the divine is strengthened, and a person can experience an intense feeling of closeness to God. Meditations of this kind can bring a person to the most profound and beautiful experiences imaginable. A word of caution is in order at this point. Now, this is the point he wants to make. Once again, if the Vav wants to be with, or this Vav really wants to experience the spiritual, 
and get deeply connected to the spiritual would lead him up to Chochmah, to the highest realms. What happens to the relationship with Malchus? Because if you're looking up, you're not looking down. If you're looking up, well, you want to get down. How does it work? This is what Rabbi Memron says. He says that a person can have in these states, you can reach such a tremendous state of ecstasy, uh, can be so marvelous that he may not want to return to his normal state of consciousness. Now, I have to say that in difficult times, this has actually happened to me. It is possible for a person to become completely lost in the mystic state. I'm not saying that it was lost, but I could say she actually swallowed up by it. Therefore, before exploring these higher, higher states, be sure that you have something to bring you down safely. It is very much like flying a plane. Taking off is exhilarating. But before you take off, you better know how to land again. Now I have something to add into this, which is not in this piece, because if you know, if you've if you seen if you've ever read my uh my biography or a little sketch that I made of my background in psychology then you could see that I'm really always concerned about the relationship between male and female. And in other places, uh, Rabbi Memran and also the Kabbalists hold that male and female is really oneness. That's really what you're looking for, is oneness with the female. But the female, as we said before, could be either in the spiritual dimension, which is in Bina, as the mother, so to speak, and being fed by tremendous spirituality, which is fantastic, which is what we are talking about, and Malchus, which has demands. And that's the reason why we have male and female. Because the female, to me, that's the call to come back to the world. So this, and that's really the struggle. For this reason, most texts on Jewish meditation stress the stress that before embarking on the higher levels, a person should have a master. Right? So that's good. Then if he goes up and does not know how to come down or does not want to, that was the point I wanted to make myself. It's not a question that I didn't want to, but it was a difficult situation I was in at one time and I used Rabbi Mimron's techniques. It, it wasn't easy that I had to push on it, but the motivation was there. And I really did achieve a, a state of tremendous ecstasy. It went on for a while and you had to figure out how to get back. But there was a reason why I went up in the first place. And then there's a reason why I came back. And I'll tell you in a minute. So who does not want to be the master, be able to talk him down. Now who's going to be able to bring this person down? Other sources in indicate that mystics would actually take an oath to return to a normal state of consciousness at the end of their meditative sessions. So in other words, it was so beautiful in the other world, in the world of Bina, why come back to Malchus? But they had, so they had to take an oath. Then even if they were not inclined to return, they would be bound by their oath. So let's just read the little blurb and I'll tell you what the secret is that I had that's been a blessing to me. The control of the mind one has during the meditative experience will enhance the spiritual experiences tremendously. So the struggle is really that. The struggle is to be able to be the balance for those of us who are male. To have the balance to be able to go to the highest places and also come back to deal with your family. And so I have, there's one magic word that always works, brings me back, no matter where I am or what I'm doing. And that is my name, Bob. Because my other half calls my name, I'm back down in the world. And she has brought me into the world. That's really one of the greatest things that the Zuk has to offer to her Zohar, is to keep him in the world. Bring all that Shefa from up above that you get and bring it down into our world. Anyway, that's Baruch Fleischman here. Um, my opinion on this piece by Rabbi Memron, just a wonderful, wonderful safer. All the best. Thanks for learning.